I thought I heard uh, Dr. Adnavivas here also. Okay. Hi, uh, Hello. Good evening, Go ladies and gentlemen, commissioners and staff, and welcome to the planning board special meeting of Monday, October 26, 2020, at 6.30 p.m. via webinar session. Chairwoman Northrop, please proceed. Yes. Please stand for the flag salute. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. required have been properly posted in the planning board office and with the city of Patterson clerk that the public notice and advertisements have been published in the Herald News on 10 17 20 in accordance with the law and that the copies of such notice and public advertisements are on file in the planning board office as is also the agenda listing the applications to be taken up by the planning board at this meeting the procedure tonight will be in accordance with the rules regulations and bylaws as heretofore determined by the planning board at its office and the municipal complex in the city of Patterson. Roll call, please. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. Commissioner Ahmed. Present. Commissioner Brooks. Absent. Commissioner Savalos. Present. Commis Commissioner Cleves. Present. Commissioner Santana. <laughs> Commissioner Santana. <laughs> I'll come back to her. She is here, though. Yes, I see it. Commissioner Issa is absent. Commissioner Eugene. I'm here. Commissioner Cook. Absent. Councilman Velas. Absent. Uh, Commissioner Santana. Present. Thank you. Vice Chairman Fisher. Present. And Chairwoman Northam. Present. The subject um, of is present this evening. Okay, thank you. And before I go any further, I'm just going to ask, unless you're speaking, please everyone turn their microphones away. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Notice pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act addressing effective coronavirus measures on the next public meeting, consistent with the coronavirus related restrictions of Executive Order Number 107, given on Saturday, March 21st, 2020 by Governor Philip D. Murphy, the Planning Board of the City of Patterson will not conduct in-person participation of the public at all future meetings unless until further notice. However, public participation will be available by means of communication equipment pursuant to the NJSA 10 colon 40. administrative, technical, or other city personnel to be present in or near the council chambers, third floor, City Hall, 155 Market Street, Patterson, New Jersey. In-person participation of the public is prohibited. Nevertheless, for reasons of compliance with the said executive order number 107, public participation will be available by calling 973-321-1579, and I will repeat that later, meeting ID number 711-680-0071, Planning Board special meeting on Monday, October 26, 2020 at 630 on the date and time that the meeting is scheduled to commence. The public may also participate in the meeting by accessing the website of the City of Patterson, www.pattersonnj.gov, and following the email in for the meeting, www.patterson.gov slash planning board. Okay, um, this evening, I believe we're going to be hearing... Just give me a minute because my paperwork, I don't have the full paperwork. Just give me one moment, please. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to be hearing um, Mr. Deutsch. We're going to be hearing the um, the one on Broadway or the one. Is, which one are we hearing first? I'm sorry. Broadway. Oh, I'm not right. out of okay, so so uh, let me go back then because this is okay. Got it. All right. Okay. So, um, Paramount Ass Assets, uh, Mr. Ralph Ponza, are you representing the applicant this evening? Yes, for the record, I'm Ponza on behalf of Paramount Assets, LLC, Madam Chair. Good evening. Okay, good evening. Thank you. Okay, so Paramount a Assets, 362-386 Broadway, Block 4204, lots 1, 2, 3, 22, and 23. Lot 1 is located on Rosa Parks Boulevard between Van Houten Street and Broadway. The existing one-story building, which includes a Walgreens pharmacy and laundry mat, are to remain with 26 existing parking spaces on a 9,680-square-foot lot. On Lot 2 exists a vacant three-story, 11,050-square-foot office building that the applicant proposes to convert to a commercial use. The first floor is to be divided into six commercial tenant spaces. The second floor is divided into two commercial spaces. A gym is to take one of the second floor commercial spaces and the entire floor, third floor commercial space of the building. Lots 3, 22, and 23 are vacant land, and the applicant proposes to construct a 93-space parking lot with an access driveway to Broadway. The combined parcels have total area of 73,225 square feet, or 1,681 acres. Is that 1,000? Or 1.681 acres, I'm sorry. This proposal is within the general commercial zone of the fourth floor redevelopment plan. It requires site plan approval and bulk variances. Um, Mr. Deutsch, can we have your review, please? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you. Property taxes and sewer charges are current. Mr. Maurice Levy and Ryan Levy each own 50% are each 50% stockholders of Paramount Assets, providing an address of Teal Box 8685 Elizabeth, New Jersey. Lakeland Surveying has prepared a topographic survey dated February 10, 2020, that indicates the property is firm to 325 feet on Broadway. Additional front of 202 feet on Rosa Parks Boulevard, and also front of 400 feet on Manhattan Street. Additionally, the eastern side lot line measures 101 feet in a southerly direction from Broadway, and 75 feet in an easterly direction, then 101 feet in a southerly direction to its intersection with Manhattan Street. The survey also indicates existing structures on lots one and two which are the lots closest to the intersection of Broadway and Rosa Parks Boulevard. The lots have been bought 73,225 square feet for 1.7 acres. Lots 3, 22, and 23 are vacant. Prior to a fire, lot 3 had a historic designated dwelling on it known as the Frederick, Frederick William Cook Residence. The dwelling was destroyed by fire in 1992, and the lot has remained vacant since. Evans Architect has prepared a six-page drawing submission dated March 18, 2020. Sheet number S1 is the site plan. It indicates the zoning ordinance data, tax map, and proposed site plan. Lot 1 is approximately lot area of 21,832 square feet and contains an existing one-story building that is located on the southeast corner of Broadway, and Rosa Parks Boulevard. The building is 9,672 square feet of existing building square footage. The building currently has two occupied tenant spaces and one unoccupied tenant space. Walgreens Pharmacy and a laundromat are the tenants. 26 parking spaces are also existing in Lot 1. Lot 2 is approximately lot area 21,800. Existing three story building, mass use for office use, and not even building retail spaces on the first floor. Space on the second floor, and one commercial space on uh, three, 22, and 23 are proposed to be used as a 93 space parking lot. Lot three is approximately a lot area of 10,400 square feet. Lot 22 is approximately a lot area of 
7,575 square feet. About 23 is approximately lot area of 10,943 square feet. A note on the plan indicates wall-mounted perimeter security lights and cameras will be attached to the building. Landscaping is indicated the northeast and southeast corners of the parking lot. The parking lot width is 24 feet and the parking spaces are 19 width and 18 feet in length with the exception of the two handicapped parking spaces. The proposed turn cut in Broadway is 24 feet in width. The existing access into the site is obtained from either a two-way driveway on Rosa Parks Boulevard or a two-way driveway on Manhattan Street. Rosa Parks Boulevard is a two-way street and Manhattan Street is a one-way street in a westerly direction. Turn cut is existing and will remain. Sheet number F2 indicates details and notes including a light pole detail, the curb gate detail, shrub and tree planting details, permeable paver detail, refuse recycling detail, seepage pit section, fence detail, and concrete sidewalk detail. Sheet number F3 is a soil erosion, site utility, grading plan, and detail. Mike, excuse me, Mike, it's, you're breaking up. It's getting more difficult to hear you. Maybe IT can look into it. I just wanted to make you aware of that. Okay. Yes, thank you. I was just about to say that. Okay. Um. <laughs> Sheet number SK1 are the floor plans. The floor plan indicates six proposed commercial tenant spaces with access on the left side of the building that is adjacent to the proposed parking lot. Each space, each space includes a restroom and a mechanical unit. Each of these access doors into the units there are two access doors to the upper floor situated at the eastern and western sides of the building, which also includes a stairway and elevators at each location. The unit sizes are 1,336, 1,715 square feet, and four units that are 1,828 square feet. The second floor plan indicates two proposed commercial tenant spaces of 5,682 and 500 and 5,683 square feet. No, rest, no restrooms are indicated. Sheet number SK2 is the third floor plan. The third floor is one commercial tenant space of 11,248 square feet. No restroom is indicated. Sheet number SK3 are the building elevations. The building has a height of 39 feet. The Broadway elevation indicates new windows, new building signage, and new first floor storefront windows. The left side elevation indicates the new first floor commercial store stores, new signage, new windows, and existing windows to remain. The right side elevation indicates two new service doors on the first floor, existing egress stairs to remain, and existing windows to remain. The rear elevation indicates a proposed new second access entry and canopy structure. All existing windows are to remain. One parking space for every 600 square feet of retail space is required. As 34,000 square feet of retail space is proposed, 57 all street parking spaces are, are required for the three-story building. The one-story building has 9,800 square feet of retail and laundromat space, requiring 16 all street parking spaces. As 120 all street parking spaces are being proposed, as 73 all street parking spaces are required, a parking variance is not required. The fourth ward redevelopment plan encourages the redevelopment and adaptive reuse of obsolete and or underutilized facilities for revitalization and economic development. As a portion of the property in the three-story building in this parcel has been in non-use for more than five years, this proposal would be in conformance with the redevelopment plan and the proposed uses, which are retail. Enclosed refuse collection areas are located on the western side of the three-story building. 
Range calculations are required. When submitted, they will be sent to the city engineer for review and approval. It shall be the responsibility of the applicant and or the preparer of the plan to obtain a letter from the city engineer indicating that the plans have been satisfactorily reviewed prior to the plans being released to the construction official. No aluminum or chain link fences are committed within the front yard setbacks. All fencing shall be of a wrought iron or decorative type in accordance with the fourth board redevelopment plan. As the applicant is developing this parcel based on the total lot sizes of all five lots combined, evidence of the lots being merged and are consolidated by the Office of the City of Patterson Tax Assessor be provided prior to final approval. Prior to occupancy or re-occupancy of any of the retail and or commercial spaces on the parcels, the applicant shall obtain a certificate of occupancy. Any use not permitted in the zone shall require an application to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, including conditional uses. Surrounding land uses. This proposal is in the Ridley Park section of the city. Broadway in this area is a mixture of residential buildings and some semi-public uses, such as houses of worship. And Houghton Street is primarily multifamily dwellings. The three-story building was last used about 10 years ago for offices. Included remarks. The applicant estimates the cost of this proposal at approximately $500,000. A previous application on these lots was heard on January 4th, 2017. The applicant proposed to renovate the existing 9,672 square foot one story building on the southeast corner of Rosa Parks Boulevard and Broadway for commercial use. The applicant also proposed to construct an 870 square foot one story entry vestibule located between the 9,672 square foot building and to the rent and the to be renovated adjacent office building. Additionally, a new fourth floor was to be constructed to the existing three story building for only used as offices. The building was to be converted into residential use consisting of a new stair tower and 39 residential units consisting of two studio units, seven one bedroom units, two two bedroom units on the first floor and second floor to each. 15 one bedroom duplex units and two two bedroom duplex units were proposed on the existing third and proposed fourth floor. The application was conditionally approved and final approval was obtained for the Walgreens Pharmacy, the existing laundromat, and the third commercial space. The present application supersedes the previous conditional approval for the conversion of the three-story building for residential use and, and the proposed fourth floor addition. That is your staff review for this proposal, Madam Chairwoman. <clears throat> Please let the record reflect that Commissioner Brooks is in attendance. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yes, Madam Secretary, did you, did I hear you say Commissioner Savalios is in attendance? Yes, he is. Okay, all right, good. All right, so Mr. Aquaviva? No, not Mr. Aquaviva. I'm sorry, Mr. Maramanda. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, good evening. Thank you again for hearing us uh, on a special meeting basis. Uh, obviously, this is an application that hopes, hopefully will continue the progress being made within this particular redevelopment section of the fourth ward plan. Uh, as we know, the roadway area has been undergoing this type of development, both residential and commercial, over the last several years. We think this will be a key component, not only to developing this site in terms of providing important business and commercial services, but also spurring other development as well. Uh, we agree with Mr. Deutsch's report in all respects. I would indicate and I'll confirm with board council uh, after if the board grants an approval in this case uh, regarding the fact that all these tax lots are under the name of my client and they at this point would have merged them by operation of law. However, I will certainly meet with the tax assessor to see that he reconfigures the tax lots so that it can, it would, it, going forward, be described as one block and lot as an entire parcel. So that's not a problem for our, uh, from our perspective. We've done that before. Um, as I said, we're in agreement with uh, the review of uh, Mr. Deutsch. This is an applicant that has a long-standing commitment to the city of Patterson. Some of the members particularly that have been on the board for several years know that Paramount was one of the earlier developers 
within the context of the fourth ward redevelopment plan and other parts of the city. Several locations, which I'll have them elaborate on, have been very successful in terms of commercial and business uses around the city. And they're back with their commitment to Patterson continuing. Uh, we believe that this is an even better project than what was approved back a couple of years ago. Uh, we have already established the Walgreens, the laundromat, and there's a medical office underway. So this is a continuation of progress in this area. That being said, I'll call Mr. Evans as our first witness. Yes, yes. Mr. Evans, please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Say so your full name for the record? Matthew Evans, architect planner, 470 Chamberlain Ave, Patterson, New Jersey. And we accept him as an expert witness. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, yeah. We will uh, this point, Mr. Evans, uh, from an architectural and planning perspective, you're testifying tonight, is that correct? Yes. And uh, you've had an opportunity to be very familiar with this site, the fact we've worked on it in different uh, forms over the last several years. Yes. Uh, give us an overview of what the site contains. I know Mr. Doig did an excellent job of summarizing uh, the site, but if you would proceed in that regard. Okay. Um, if you know the site, it's at the intersection of Rosa Parks and uh, Broadway. The existing one-story building uh, is now fully occupied at the corner. Uh, it has, we've previously uh, been before the board for the laundromat and the middle tenant and uh, the Walgreens pharmacy uh, tenant. And then there's, uh, I believe, a medical um, uh, use that took the uh, corner unit. So that'd be fully occupied at this time. Um, the improvements, it's all improved. Uh, that portion of the property with parking in the rear. The existing three-story building, which is next to it, is going to be um, basically we have to provide new um, commercial tenants on the first floor, in the second floor, and the third floor. Uh, the applicant is looking for one tenant for Blink Fitness, I believe, um, is looking to uh, move in if this were to be approved and the parcel to the east on the property which is basically vacant there was a funeral home there many years ago that burned down uh, and has been vacant probably 20 or 30 years at least and that would be all approved to provide parking for the commercial uses um, on the existing site the existing site is in the, um, re the fourth ward redevelopment uh, as a C2 general commercial zone. And we meet all the uh, requirements for bulk and use on this proposed development. And we have an excess of parking where 73 spaces is required. We have 120 parking spaces. So that's something um, that's a benefit for uh, the area and the uses uh, for um, any permitted use, commercial use, that would be proposed within the uh, new uh, <coughs> retail and commercial building uh, to the east. Um, we have, um, basically, we show all the new lighting, landscaping. We have um, refuse areas between the two buildings. There's a small alleyway between the two buildings that would be used for the refuse area and access for service for that um, part of the site. We have the details, drainage, topo topographic information, um, and grading. Then we have the existing building. We show the uh, first floor we're cutting into uh, commercial tenant spaces, which would all face the parking area. And then the existing windows along Broadway would remain with the entry to the upper floors and existing elevator would remain uh, as part of this application. We show each tenant space, which varies around, uh, I believe, around 1,600 square feet. Let me see the uh, zoom in. I'll show you a little better. Uh, about 1,300 square feet. They vary between 1,300 and 1,800 square feet. They are all separate mechanicals. Um, they have handicapped bathrooms for uh, at least one for the tenant space now. If they require more, they would be able to 
accommodate that depending on the use that would move in. <clears throat> then we have to the rear, which would be the Van Houten side, we have a new stair lobby uh, and an elevator for uh, the upper floors uh, that would access from the Van Houten side. And then we show the, um, the upper floor plan, the second floor plan shows the um, two tenant spaces, which are very large. Uh, we're looking at a Blink Fitness for one of them, uh, and also for the third floor. And the existing fire stair uh, along the side would remain, along with the new stair in the Van Houten side, and the existing stair and elevator uh, in the front along Broadway. Those um, tenant spaces, we don't show any fit out for that really. They're basically vanilla boxes, and then the bathrooms and for the Blink Fitness, all that would be accommodated in accordance with the corporate um, and the codes based on uh, bathrooms required, showers, etc., uh, for the for the tenant, and they would provide that um, to the building department and plumbing uh, in accordance with the code. So that's um, the second floor plan. Then we have the third floor plan, which is large open space. Um, whatever's up there would be removed. There's some uh, bathrooms there that would be removed as part of this um, uh, new tenant coming in, and they would provide the gym and fitness center for the third floor and half for the second. We have the um, elevations. You can see the front elevation, that's Broadway, um, which is basically new storefront windows, the existing entry, and the large windows uh, for the upper floors would be proposed. Then we have the left side elevation, which shows some large windows for the, um, the, the fitness center, and also the existing windows would be updated, and along with the new storefronts for the uh, commercial tenants on the first floor. Then we have the rear elevation, the Van Houten side. The windows would remain along with new canopy and entry door to the upper floors. And then sort of between the buildings, this is where the fire stair, existing stair would remain, service entry door, and the windows would uh, remain for those, those spaces. We're also proposing uh, rear uh, doors for all the, each tenant um, to access the dumpsters and other service areas in the rear of the uh, retail space. So uh, that's the plans. I believe I have the um, some photos of renderings. I don't know if you um, we see if I can share that. Yeah, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so this is um, artist rendering of the, basically the intersection with the new parking area and the, um, the strip mall along, along the parking area on the side, and then with the Blink Fitness taking up the upper two floors in the front, uh, the second and third, and then the uh, other ten spaces um, in the rear. We have... Um, then you can see from the Van Houten and the easterly uh, side, we have the parking and also the existing building with the new uh, fenestration and um, upgrades to the site and the building. So that's um, the application we're proposing. And Mr. Evans, uh, you indicated earlier, no variants are required in connection with this site plan. No, and we also have an excess of um, uh, 20, uh, 47 spaces as part of this application. 47 spaces beyond what's required. Yes. Okay. And the general commercial zone of the redevelopment plan uh, calls for exactly this type of use, is it fair to say? Yeah, these are all fit in with um, the proposed general commercial um, in, in the uh, uh, redevelopment plan. And the general commercial offers or allows a wide range of service type businesses. Yes. Uh, the applicant would not be proposing any liquor store, is that correct? No, there would be nothing that would be, no. I mean, anything that I have to go to the court of adjustment would have to uh, go, but... Uh, That's not part of our proposal. Right. right. Okay. And I'll have the applicant confirm a few of the other developments that the uh, that Paramount has done in the city. Uh, we'll go from there. Anything else you wish to add, or would that conclude your testimony? Uh, that would be it. That would conclude our testimony, Madam Chair.
Okay, um, Mr. Malconda, uh, how many witnesses will you be calling this evening? Just one other witness. Okay, then I'm going to ask you to call that witness, and then I'll put it out to the public, and then they can ask questions of either uh, Mr. Evans or the other witness, and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Very good. We'll call Mr. Joe, that's so. up. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is yes. the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please say your full name for the record. My name is Joseph Falesso. I am the Director of Development for Paramount Assets. I've been with the firm for over seven years, and I handle their approvals and development throughout the state. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Alesso, obviously, as such, in that capacity, you're fully familiar with this application. Is that correct? I am. Uh, okay. Obviously, you've heard Mr. Deutsch's report. You've been hand-in-hand -hand working with us all along as well. And are you in agreement with Mr. Evans' testimony on behalf of Paramount? I am. Okay. Uh, just by way of brief background, some of the commissioners may not be familiar with Paramount. Do you have a little background you could give them about Paramount's uh, commitment to Patterson? Well, Paramount has been in business for more than 25 years. Uh, we are committed to building uh, communities, retail, and residential in urban environment. We've been a very good uh, uh, developer throughout the area. Most of the properties that we develop, we keep. Um, we're a landlord. We're a property management organization. We're a leasing company, uh, a maintenance company. So when we make a commitment, um, you're usually uh, satisfied with the fact that Paramount will be there and not be flipping it to some other developer who won't meet the commitments that we've made. Uh, we've been in Patterson for several years. We're working on two more projects in Patterson that we hope to bring before the board uh, in 2021. Right. And we have, we've obtained several approvals in the past. Is that correct? That is correct. We've been uh, fortunate to uh, have the planning board sanction some of our projects, and uh, I'm proud that we brought them to fruition. Do you want to go through a few, or do you want to have Mr. Evans highlight those? I, I think Mr. Evans could probably do a better job if there's any okay. questions. We'll just go back to him real quickly on the uh, few of the projects that we have developed. Uh, and uh, as I indicated, no variances are being sought, uh, and Paramount is committed to this modification of the earlier approval. You feel that this is a, a better approach going forward, is that right? Yes, our Mark uh, has told us that um, this is this is something that Patterson could use, and I think it'll benefit the area uh, much more. Uh, if you go back to the elevation, you'll see we tried to employ a very uh, stark building that um, really steps out and creates real lively atmosphere, the fitness center on the second and third floor with the large windows uh, facing um, Broadway uh, will have a lot of life. I think that'll be kind of interesting and exciting for the uh, neighborhood. Very good. Uh, just like to go back to Mr. Evans briefly, Madam Chair. Mr. Evans, you've been, with Par you've been with Paramount all the way through. Could you highlight a few of our approvals? Okay. Some of the early approvals uh, that we've been through the boards with was 40 Broadway. Uh, we converted the upper floors to apartments uh, in downtown. We also converted the upper floors at uh, 132 uh, uh, Main Street and also um, the other buildings along Main Street. We, we've um, we, 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 uh, we done the converted the apartments above and also we've done the family dollar on uh, Straight Street and uh, Van Houten, we converted that site, and also East King Street, the Family Dollar, on, um, I think it's Fair, and uh, West 18th Street, we've converted that old uh, industrial building to a Family Dollar, laundry, um, laundry pad, and the, uh, Right. So, so they, and, they're, and they're all successful ongoing businesses, is that correct? Yes. Okay, that's all I have with both businesses, Madam Chair. 
Okay, um, at this time then I'm going to open it up to the public. If anyone from the public has any questions of Mr. Evans, the architect, Mr. Alesso, who is the management uh, portion of this application, uh, please call in at 973-321-1579. Again, 973-321-1579. And the meeting ID number is 711-680-0071. And I'll uh, allow three minutes for call, I'm sorry, two minutes for call-ins, three minutes for questions. Thank you. Madam Chair, we have no callers at this time. Okay, so at this time I'm going to open it up. I just have one quick question. I'm going to open it up to the commissioners, but I have a quick question of um, Mr. Evans. Um, I believe you said there were no um, uh, bathroom facilities on the third floor. Are you telling me that it can be outfitted and it will be outfitted when, uh, when the... Uh, the, the, the plane comes in because um, I would think they would need a, a bathroom facility on that floor. Yeah. Okay, I hear I hear echoing, so I don't know. Hold on a second. Something happened here. Go ahead. Try again. Okay. Um, they're going to propose a fitness a gym a fitness center with bathrooms, and um, they're going to need showers, and they're going to need a lot of different things associated with a fitness center. So they're going to... Um, so they'll design it out. They're going to yes. design it. Okay. Yeah, all right. That's all I want. Corporate layout. Okay, good. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. All right. So I'm going to open it up to the commissioners. Commissioners, do you have any commissioner have any questions of uh, Mr. Evans or Mr. Alesso? I have a question of Mr. Alesso. Yes. Go ahead, Commissioner Brooks. I want to... Uh, first of all, I'm not sure, but you have all the... Uh, you know who you're going to rent this to, this outstanding... I don't want to like see down the line that uh, you, you had a vacancy and it ended up being a, a grocery store. I wouldn't like to see that one on Broadway in that area. So what you what they're saying now is that all of the first floors are are are, are designated to to something, right? No, that's not correct. We okay. are we are, we are um, proposing six retail units. Mm -hmm. They will be uh, on speculation. Uh, we have several um, interested parties, but no one who has um, moved forward with kind of intent. Uh, we're not far enough along the end of the process for us to allow that uh, level of commitment uh, on uh, the respective part. Okay, so what I'm saying is so. The, the first floor entrance to the first floors is also the entrances from the Broad Street, the Broadway side, and the, and the Van Houten side. The entrance can't hardly hear. I can't hear. Someone has to mute your television set or lower it. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, um, our front entry off of Broadway will be access to the fitness center, and um, that's basically it. So the front entry off Broadway will be for the fitness center. We have a rear entry off the parking lot, 
that will be for the second floor commercial office space. And then we have entries off of the east um, side that will be off of our parking lot for the retail tenants. Now, these retail tenants are on the first floor, right? Yes, ma'am. For all of their entrances on the Van Houten Street side or the Broadway Street? Broadway. They're off of the parking lot, which is used to be the former funeral home. So I, I believe that could be, I've got to just scroll down my plan to see what side you would call out. Matt, what side is the Van Houten side? He's muted. You're muted, Matt. So we're asking what. I know that. Sorry. Uh, I've scrolled back now. So the Van Houten side is the rear side of the building. Uh, the road will park to be the west side, and the parking lot will be the east side. And all of the retail will front the east side parking lot. So there'd be access to it from Broadway. Uh, cars could drive in off of Broadway, or cars could drive in off of Rosa Parks or Van Houten and access the parking lot. And the parking lot fronts in the airport. Their windows and their doorways would be on a sidewalk that would be adjacent to the parking lot. Commissioner Brooks, does that answer your question? No. Well, yes, it does in a way. However, what I'm saying is, is I don't want to see a grocery store uh, uh, on the Broadway side. I don't. I, I, we have enough um, uh, a, a little grocery store, and Broadway is becoming. It's it, it's starting to look like we already have a little mall down the street with grocery stores all over. We don't need any more grocery stores. This is what I'm saying. And I think that you should let me let me make make me some kind of condition that you you won't do a potato or something in there. I don't think we should need that on Broadway. Mr. Mr. Lesso, I already indicated there would be no liquor stores. Are you able to make a commitment to, with regards to grocery? Yes. Okay. So no, you know those. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any questions of either Matt Evans or Mr. Alesso? Commissioner Cooney. Can you continue, uh, Mr. Cooney, 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 Cooney,
He doesn't know if it's national, but it's regional. Do we have a name for that company? Or no? Yes. Yes. This is Joe Lesso answering the question for uh, Mike Pierre Fisher. The company is Blink Fitness, and they are a uh, company owned by Equinox. So they have a, a strong uh, financial background. This is not the kind of fitness center that once you build it has a high probability of going bankrupt. Yeah, I've heard of Equinox. Thank you. Okay. Are we good, Commissioner? Commissioner Fisher, yeah. are we good? Okay. okay. All right. Any, any other commissioners have any questions? Madam Secretary, just make sure, I know um, Commissioner Ceballo, sometimes we can't hear him and we can't hear um, uh, Commissioner Santana. Are they okay? Did they ask for the okay. questions? No one is muted by me, so it's okay. Okay. Well, if anyone, if anyone has any questions before I move any further, text me or text uh, Madam Secretary just to let her know because I don't know what's going on. It seems like we're getting some breakup. Okay, I'm not. I'm not hearing anything. So I'm assuming that I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Maraconda to. Do you want to sum up, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Madam <laughs> uh, Chair, thank you. Yes, that concludes our direct testimony uh, at this time. Again, we feel this is an extremely positive project that continues this Broadway redevelopment zone. Uh, we are committed to. You know, high-end uh, commercial fitness that conform to the redevelopment zone, as you can see, in terms of our track record with Walgreens and the laundromat and the gym facility. And we're looking for those kind of entities to take the spots that are going to be approved by this site, on this site, hopefully. Again, no variances, completely conforming, state-of-the-art type of building, and an applicant with a strong track record of success on commercial and residential development in the city of Patterson. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And one other thing, I've, the only thing I heard uh, this evening came from Commissioner Brooks. We'd like to put a condition should we decide to approve this application, and that would be to put no uh, bodegas or grocery stores in that particular uh, site facing Broadway. Am I correct, Mr. Aquaviva? Well, I also heard um, Mr. Maracon, uh, I believe you stated that be no, liquor no, liquor, no liquor stores. Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. No right, so, grocery stores or liquor stores. Okay. Okay. Fine. All right. So, uh, is there any commissioner that would like to make a motion on this application? Commissioners, I'll, I'll make a I'll make a motion. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Brooks, please go ahead. On the application of Paramount Associates LLC, twenty-five Academy Street. Fifth floor, Newark, New Jersey, but probably located at 362-386 Broadway, block 4202, blocks 1, 2, 3, be granted, subject to site plan approval, bulk variance, city engineer, HEP Soil Conservation District, evidence of block consolidation and or merger, and the conditions of no grocery store or liquor store would be permitted in any of the retail locations. Second. Commissioner Quay, second. First Commissioner Brooks, seconded by Commissioner Zavalos and Commissioner Quay. Can I call the roll, Chairwoman? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I was first by Commissioner Brooks, seconded by Commissioner Savalos and Commissioner I'm Clay. Clay. Commissioner Clay, is right. Okay, roll well, call, please. Thank you. Commissioners, Commissioner Ahmed. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner, please. Yes. Commissioner Savalos. Yes. Commissioner Santana. Yes. Commissioner Eugene. Yes. Vice Chairman Fisher. Yes. And Chairwoman Northrop. 
Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Madam well, Chair, if I may, just one indicate to the board. I'm heading over at Mr. Bleeker's office five minutes away, and Mr. Evans has another meeting. I have already told Mr. Alcohiva that my appearance will be entered on behalf of Chestnut Partners. By the time I get there, I have no problem to begin Mr. Deutsch's opening review. But I should be here okay. in five minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Can we close this one and start the other one? Yes. Make a motion to cl I make the motion to close the meeting. Do I have a second? Anyone? Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Clinton is here waving. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand. Raise your hand. All in favor. Everyone's in favor. Okay. All right. So uh, let's give it just one minute, and then we'll start the next meeting. <laughs> Okay. Everybody just mute, mute your mics for a moment, please. Now I can. Who's asking me? Is it, is it Vice Chair? I, I hear you right. You're laughing like an echo. What's going on? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not on my computer. I'm on a set. I know. You're not going to be at this meeting. Right. You're accusing yourself from this yes. meeting. Yes. Okay, good enough. Okay. We still have a um, warm. We do, right? I pray we do. I see uh, Commissioner Santana, Commissioner Brooks, Commissioner Ahmed, uh, Commissioner Bouzine. I'm sorry? No, no, I, I uh, wanted just to make sure, Commissioner Fisher, don't go anywhere until I have it on the record, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to um, let everyone that's here now, we can stand and uh, let's stand for the salute. Go ahead. Okay, stand for the flag salute, everyone, please. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, 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 indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> One moment. Okay. All right, commissioners, uh, planning board, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners, I'm sorry, planning board staff, ladies and gentlemen, as chairwoman of the city of Patterson's planning board, I call this meeting of 1026 to order. I hereby state that all the provisions of the state of New Jersey public meeting law have been fully and completely met, that the notice of provisions required have been properly posted in the planning board office and with the city of Patterson clerk. That the public notice and advertisements have been published in the Herald News on 10-17-20 in accordance with the law. And that the copies of such notice and public advertisements are on file in the, pl in the planning board office, as is also the agenda listing the applications to be taken up by the planning board at this meeting. The procedures tonight will be in accordance with the rules and regulations and bylaws as heretofore determined by the planning board and its office in the municipal complex in the city of Patterson. Roll call, please. Commissioners, Commissioner Ahmed. Present. Commissioner Brooks. Present. Commissioner Savalos. Present. Commissioner Santana. Present. Commissioner Cleves. Present. Commissioner Issa absent. Commissioner Eugene. I'm here, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Commissioner Cook, absent. Councilman Velas, absent. Uh, Commissioner Vice Chairman Fisher. I'm here. Thank you. And Chairwoman Northrop. Present. I, I believe um, I believe that uh, Vice Chair Fisher is recusing himself from this application. Is that Thank correct, Commissioner? Okay. Okay. Right, just give me one minute, please. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a problem with my computer. Just bear with me one moment. <laughs> All right, I'm 
within a wing it because I can't find the paper, unfortunately. This might be it. Here it is. Okay. Public. Notice pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act addressing effective coronavirus measures on the next public meeting, consistent with the coronavirus related restrictions of Executive Order Number 107, given on Saturday, March 21st, 2020, by Governor Philip D. Murphy. The Planning Board of the City of Patterson will not conduct in person participation of the public at all future meetings until further notice. However, public participation will be available by means of communication equipment pursuant to the NJSA 10. 4-8 commencing on April 15, 2020. Though there may potentially be a practical need for a limited number of administrative, technical, or other city personnel to be present in or near the council chamber's third floor, City Hall, 155 Market Street, Patterson, New Jersey, in-person participation of the public is prohibited. Nevertheless, for reasons of compliance with the said executive order number 107, public participation will be available by calling 973 321 1579, and I will repeat that number later. Meeting ID number is 711 680 0071. Planning board special meeting on Monday, October 26, 2020, at 7 p.m. on the date and time that the meeting is scheduled to commence. The public may also participate in the meeting by accessing the website of the City of Patterson, www.pattersonnj.gov, and following the email link for the meeting, www.pattersonnj. Dot gov slash planning board. Okay, give me one moment. <clears throat> we already know that Mr. Maraconda is representing the uh, applicant this evening on this, uh, this particular application. And, uh, okay, here we go. Okay, Chestnut Port. Chestnut Partners, LLC, 06-208, Redwood Avenue, Block 1006, Lot 55. The applicant proposes to demolish the existing two-story frame building on the parcel and construct a four-story, 16-unit residential building on a lot now or formerly containing a mixed-use building. The lot contains an area of 14,278 square feet and is located on the eastern side of Redwood Avenue adjacent to the Molly Ann's Brook at 348 feet north of Jeremus Street. Parking for 16 vehicles is proposed with 13 of the 16 vehicles to be parked on a proposed elevated parking deck near the northern portion of the property. The first floor proposes two one-bedroom units and two two-bedroom units. The second third and fourth floors propose a four bedroom unit on each floor. Um, so proposes four two bedroom units on each floor. Variances are requested for a lot area, 15,000 square feet is required and 14,270 square feet is provided. Minimum lot widths as 150 feet is required and 130 Point forty eight feet exists. A 25-foot front yard setback is required and a 5-foot front yard setback is proposed. One side yard setback is a minimum of 20 feet is required and 5 feet is proposed. A 25-foot rear yard setback is required and a 16.76-foot rear yard setback is proposed. A lot coverage of 20% is permitted and lot coverage of 30.38% is proposed. And parking, 32 parking spaces are required and 16 parking spaces are proposed. This proposal is located within the R-3 high medium density residential district. It requires site plan approval and bulk variances. So at this time, I'm going to um, ask Mr. Joyce for his review. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Property taxes and sewer charges are current. Persons holding a 10% or more of the stock ownership interest in Chestnut Partners are Michael Simone and Joseph Simone, each owning 50% of the stock and providing an address of 883 Woodland Road, 
Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. As indicated on the survey prepared by Thomas Stearns of GB Engineering, in the November 6, 2019, the parcel has frontage of 130.48 feet on Redwood Avenue, a rear lot line that measures 101.9 feet, a northern side lot line that measures 140 feet, and a bifurcated southern lot line that measures 93.3 feet and then 13.9 feet. The site is area of 14,278 square feet or 0.33 acres. The site is located on the eastern side of Redwood Avenue adjacent to Molly Ann's Brook. A one-story masonry garage is located on the shared south property line. The last in our present use of the site in question was as two commercial units on the first floor and residential units on the second floor. Bleeker Architectural Group has prepared an 11-page site plan dated March 2, 2020. Cover sheet indicates the drawing schedule, the location plan, the zoning ordinance data for this proposed 16-unit residential building. SP1 is the 200-foot radius map. SP2 is the proposed site plan and indicates that a proposed four-story building with approximate dimensions of 43 feet in width and 85 feet in length is proposed five feet from the front property line, 16.76 feet from the rear property line, five feet from the southern property line, and 57.63 feet from the northern property line. The proposed elevated parking structure has dimensions of 122 feet by 26.7 feet, by 122 feet, by 20.05 feet. The existing 20-foot driveway apron is to remain on Redwood, A Redwood Avenue, and the internal driveway aisle is to be 24 feet in width. Of the 16 proposed parking spaces, one is designated as a handicapped space. 760 square feet of recreational grass area is indicated in the southeastern corner of the parcel. SP3 is the drainage plan. Stormwater detention structures and stormwater calculations are indicated on the plan. SP4 is the soil erosion plan. A permit from the Hudson Essex Passaic Soil Conservation District is required prior to construction. SP5 is the lighting plan, during SP6 is the site details plan. A100 is the first floor plan. The main access into the building is from the northern side of the building. The access doors lead into a lobby area with an elevator to the left, stairs to the right, and a hallway to a secondary door on the southern side of the building. There is a garbage room that can only be accessed from a door on the exterior south side of the building. The two one-bedroom units located on either side of the lobby each contain 644 square feet, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a living room area. The two-bedroom units are located on either side of the rear portion of the building and contain 798 and 838 square feet. Each of the two bedroom units has a kitchen, a bathroom, and a living room area. A2 is the second through fourth floor plan. There are four two bedroom units proposed on each floor. Each two bedroom unit contains 932 square feet and includes two bathrooms, a walk in closet, a kitchen, and a living room. A3 is the rooftop terrace plan. The plan indicates a rooftop of 4,338 square feet, of which 3,597 square feet is to be recreational space. Tables to sit at and landscaping is indicated. An elevator and two enclosed stairwells lead to the roof. An enclosed bathroom is also indicated. A4 is the building elevation plan. The building has a proposed height of 52 feet and 6 inches. The type of proposed building materials is not indicated. 
The R3 high medium density residential district permits low rise apartment buildings, which are defined as a multiple family dwelling structure containing three or more separate dwelling units per structure being greater than three stories in height, but no more than seven stories in height. Variances are requested for lot area. 15,000 square feet required and 14,278 square feet provided. Minimum lot width as 150 feet is required and 130.48 feet exists. A 25 foot front yard setback is required and a 5 foot front yard setback is proposed. One side yard setback as a minimum of 20 feet is required and 5 feet is proposed. A 25-foot rear yard setback is required, a 16.76-foot rear yard setback is proposed. Lot coverage of 20% is permitted, and lot coverage of 30.38% is proposed, and parking, 32 parking spaces are required, and 16 parking spaces are proposed. So it be the responsibility of the applicant and or the repair of the plan to obtain a letter from the city engineer indicating the plans have been satisfactorily reviewed prior to the plans being released to the construction official. Surrounding land use. This proposal is in the total west section of the city. The area is predominantly composed of older, two and a half story, two family and multi-family dwellings. A two story garden apartment style building is located on the western side of Redwood Avenue across from this proposal. Including remarks, the applicant estimates the approximate cost of this proposal at approximately one million dollars. That's your staff review for this proposal, mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Maraconda. Yes, we are ready to proceed on behalf of the applicant, Alan Maraconda, Chestnut Partners LLC. With me is Mr. Bleeker as our architect planner, as well as a representative of the applicant. Again, thank you for hearing us on our special meeting basis. Uh, we basically concur with Mr. Deutsch's report. Uh, as he indicates, we're in the R3 high medium density zone, which permits this type of development. Uh, the applicant is anxious to uh, bring this site into conformity with the zone. As Mr. Deutsch indicated, this had a history of non conforming use with regard to misuse. Uh, Mr. Beaker will be testifying as to the site plan as well as planning testimony uh, at this time, and the applicant will be available as our follow up witness. So we're ready for Mr. Bleeker at this time. Yes, please go right ahead. Yeah. Please raise your right hand. If you are front testimony, you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Say your full name for the record. John Bleeker, B L E E K E R. Uh, John, you're a professional background and testimony before the board many times, I'm aware. Yes. And, and, we accept, and we accept Mr. Bleeker as an expert witness. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you again. Uh, Mr. Bleeker, you've had an opportunity to hear uh, Mr. Glitch's report this evening, is that correct? That's correct. And of course, you have are very familiar with the site, having prepared the site plan and uh, been on the site on, on a personal basis and prepared this plan in conjunction with the applicant. Is that true? That is correct. Okay. Could you give us an overview of the site and how we're proposing to develop it? Uh, absolutely. The property uh, in question, is, as the board um, can see from our initial presentation drawings. Can I, can I, I just want to interrupt you for one minute. Do you have plans that you want to put up on the screen? I'd be glad to. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. The, the drawing in the center, this is our cover sheet, is called the location plan. And the area shaded in gray is the actual site in question. And as the board can see, it is actually a uh, border on Redwood Avenue, and it really fronts on Redwood Avenue. Uh, it also uh, is bordered by Molly Inns Brook to the left side of the, uh, the site. Uh, and um, the nearest, closest cross street is the Remus, uh, which would actually be um, to the right side of our property. So uh, the property, you know, primarily and only has frontage basically on Redwood Avenue. You go to the next page. <clears throat> Let's go to the site plan. All right, the next drawing that I'm showing you now is SB2, um, and that is basically the, the general site plan drawing. And um, I'd like to just describe a little bit about the project, and then I'll get a little bit more into this plan. 
the project, uh, the existing property right now uh, consists of a two-story frame dwelling. It is located uh, more to the right side of the property. It's actually only four feet from the property line as it currently sits. And it's only four feet from the front property line, which is Redwood Avenue. It is uh, best known as 208 Redwood Avenue. Uh, it currently is utilized as uh, a retail on the first floor, and then there's apartments on the second floor. Uh, as Mr. Maraconda indicated, and as the board knows, in, in accordance to your R3 zoning, uh, that is a non-conforming situation because it's a mixed-use building uh, where the R3 um, zoning allows primarily for residential uh, uses. So uh, what we plan to do is raise that structure and then construct the new, pres the new building that's uh, before you tonight with this presentation. Uh, and our proposal before you tonight is to design 16 new residential units uh, with uh, park off, off site, I mean, on site parking uh, for 16 uh, spaces. And uh, we also are able to develop the property with some uh, outdoor recreation space, both at ground level and then on the rooftop terrace. So basically, we will have. Uh, four stories of uh, residential units, uh, and uh, that would be in compliance of your, your R3 zoning, which allows up to seven stories, uh, and the density is consistent for this type of building uh, in the R3 zone uh, for uh, in terms of the density. So that's really how we came about, you know, developing the project uh, to be in conformance to the R3 zoning uh, as close as possible. Uh, where the existing site as it currently sits now is not in conformance. Um, the property has some unique features to it in the sense that um, the property from the right side is really the, the highest level and it's pretty flat for half of the site along Redwood Avenue going towards Molly Innsbruck. But unfortunately from the halfway point uh, back down towards the brook, it actually has a fairly good slope to it, uh, which we're going to have to um, overcome you know, with this application. Our proposal is to actually um, leave the existing earth as it is, uh, that goes up against the stream, but build basically an elevated parking deck uh, structure that actually allow the parking level to be level with the, uh, the rest of the site, uh, but also uh, strong enough to accommodate uh, the on-site parking uh, so we can get the 16 units uh, completely within our property uh, for this uh, particular application. Uh, as uh, as indicated in Mr. Deutsch's report, which we completely concur with, uh, the project is designed and presented tonight as 14 two-bedroom units uh, and two one-bedroom units. Uh, we are aware that um, 32 parking spaces is required, and we are asking the board's consideration to consider a variance for 16 spaces uh, as uh, you know, we've developed a, a number of properties um, uh, all throughout the city, and we found that the, uh, the parking that we're proposing is actually adequate for this particular use uh, in this location. Uh, and we've proposed this before uh, in both your board as well as the zoning board, and we feel that uh, 16 spaces on site uh, will be sufficient for this particular use. Would it be fair to say, Mr. Bleeker, that perhaps uh, in your experience, some of the one-bedroom units may or may not own vehicles, so that would also tend to limit the need for vehicles? Yeah, that is our experience, that a number of the units that are going to be utilized uh, for this site uh, will not always, you know, the tenants will be fire parts. And we're, we're, also in, in the total, we're also in the total section of the city, uh, which has mass transportation along Toto Avenue as well? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we're in, a, we're in a good location in terms of uh, easy access to mass transportation uh, on, along Redwood Avenue and Union Avenue. And uh, with respect to some of the other variances, I would characterize them as fairly limited. We have a very large lot area, I think, in, in comparison to many of other project, many other projects we've developed with this number of units. We actually have right below the 15,000 uh, square foot uh, lot size, right? Yeah, that is absolutely correct. Um, the lot area that is required for this particular use uh, in this particular building type is 15,000 square feet. Uh, we have 14,278 square feet. 
So we're you know very very um, close to the total square footage required, but we are slightly lower uh, than um, than the fifteen thousand feet. Uh, but again, we feel that that is a de minimis uh, variance request, um, and um, also the same might apply to lot width as well. Very close. Well, uh, lot width is the same thing. It requires one hundred and fifty feet. We are requesting. again these are conditions we can't change, unfortunately. Right. But uh, we have a condition where it's 130.48 feet, uh, so there is a slight uh, reduction in the lot width because of the way the lot has was already developed prior to this. Right, and again, we don't we don't even approach the building height limitation or the number of stories. We're well we're well under both of those requirements. Yeah, as I indicated before, we are permitted to go up to seven stories with this building. We're not. Uh, we're only going to four. Uh, we feel that um, you know we are you know still. Uh, able, and also the dwelling units per acre are required is 50. Uh, even with this proposal, we are still underneath that, which would be 49 units. Right. And with regard to um, the design of the units themselves, uh, square footage, do we meet the city's uh, minimum requirements for the ones and the twos as far as... Yeah, we, we are very close to meeting those requirements. In some cases, we're uh, bigger than the requirements. Uh, or just just to, just around the requirement, uh, very closely. Can, can you enlarge that that particular application that's up there now? Thank you. All right. The um, the plan in front of you right now is the actual floor plan, the typical floor plan per floor. Uh, what you'll see is we are providing uh, in the center area. Um, the, the basically a, a general lobby on each floor. Uh, there will be a staircase uh, that will be located to the right side of that uh, lobby uh, when you would walk in. On the left side of the lobby, there's a new elevator which will be installed uh, if this project is approved. And then behind that is a garbage chute and a garbage room uh, where garbage will be collected as well as recyclables and then uh, brought out uh, for um, private collection uh, on the dates that um, that they would be serviced. And basically we have two units on the left side of the building from that center lobby and then two units on the right side per floor. Uh, one of the units in the front, uh, nearest the, well, close to the front entrance would be two one bedroom units, one on the right side, one on the left. And then going uh, towards the garbage room, you'll see that there's also two two bedroom units Again, one on the right and one on the left. So we are slightly under the, the square footage requirement for those two two bedroom units. Is that, that, right? that is correct. Very slightly. But in terms of your layout, you're satisfied that the two bedrooms and the uh, bathroom facilities are are properly accommodated. Yeah, I mean we, we have you know very adequate. It, actually, the the master bedroom is quite large, uh, and the other bedroom is very adequately sized. The bathroom is, um, again, ADA uh, accessible handicap dimensions where it could be adaptable if needed, uh, which is required by current code. Uh, there is a nice kitchen area with an island, and then there's a quite a large uh, living area. So uh, due to the layout that we are able to accomplish with this site, um, I, I do believe that um, you know, we're, we are in actually good, good condition. And if you look on the next floor plan, uh, which we just showed, which we just put up, it shows that the two bedroom units, there's four of them on this floor. Every one is 933 square feet. So all those units are in excess of the uh, minimum 900 square foot requirement for two bedroom units. It's only the, go back to the first floor, please. It's only the um, two, two bedroom units on the first floor that are a little bit smaller, and that's really to accommodate, um, you know, that garbage room and the way the circulation has to, you know, work within the hallway. So I'm really, we're only asking for a, a, a variance condition or a waiver condition, basically for two two-bedroom units, slightly below the 900 square feet. All the one-bedroom units are in excess of the 600 square foot requirement. And all the other two bedroom units are in excess of the 900 square foot. So the second through third through fourth floor. Yes. Okay. And the second through fourth are all identical floors. Right. Okay. And um, you indicated um, that there's some obviously some topography and some other issues here 
your, your original plan does not propose any basement. How would you propose the mechanicals to be taken care of? Or uh, we, um, well, I mean, the, the one, one issue that we're, we're dealing with with this property, as I explained to the board with, uh, previous, uh, we have a unique situation where we border Molly and Brook. And because of the fact that we border Molly and Brook, um, you know, we, we are undetermined, you know, what level the water table will be on our particular site. So I didn't want to propose a full basement at this time. But we do plan to, you know, we will try to do a partial basement which we would expect to put in all the mechanicals, as well as um, you know a laundry facility for the building itself. Uh, but again, uh, you know we, we would have to if the board you know approves the project, then obviously we would do the soil borings to determine the level of that uh, water table, and hopefully you know we would be able to accommodate at least a partial basement uh, for uh, both the laundry as well as the mechanicals. Okay. And obviously that proposal uh, you would submit through Mr. Deutsch's office for review. That's correct. Right. And uh, with regard to on-site lighting and security, I know the board always have, wants to make sure that these are secure sites for new residents. Yes. I mean, it, the drawing that uh, we just are presenting right now is what we're going to do. That's right. S is your drawing and your presentation SP5. That shows uh, a brand new lighting plan which shows lights to be installed uh, along the building or in the parking area. It also shows that the foot candle levels of illumination on the surface of the ground is going to be in excess or at the re ordinance requirements. Uh, the build, basically the whole site will be properly lit as well as the parking area. Uh, we are going to be installing security cameras throughout the whole site. Uh, they will be located on all entrance points, as well as all uh, site areas, including the parking area on the outside of the building. And then on the inside of the building, all common spaces, including the roof terrace, uh, would be um, you know protected with uh, security cameras, as well as common hallways and any areas of congregation, including the lobby. Okay. And the parking lot area would, as you described it, elevated, would be secure and lit? That is absolutely correct. Okay. I think that would conclude our presentation, unless you have anything else you wish to add at this time, Mr. Weaver. Um, we, the only other thing that we didn't really touch upon is we are asking for two setbacks, bulk variant setbacks. Uh, one is the, um, well, actually three. I mean, one is the uh, front yard setback. The other is the side yard setback, but as I indicated, the existing building uh, has actually a 4.83 side yard setback and a 4.18 uh, front yard setback. We are proposing five foot setback on both of those sites, so actually we're going to be a little bit further than the existing condition on the side yard, uh, but uh, the front yard uh, we are going to decrease it to uh, well, increase it to five feet setback. Again, we feel that, you know, that this should be uh, hopefully a variance that the board would look favorably upon because it is the way the existing property is developed with the building basically in the, in the um, left side of the property, if you will. Uh, and there's a number of reasons why that happened. Uh, and my primary thought is, is because the, as I indicated before, the steepness of the slope, basically from the halfway point of the property going down towards Molly Innsbruck, so they consolidated the development in the building, the original building, over all the way to the right side of the, the existing site. Uh, and we want to do the same thing for both, for the similar reasons. We want to keep the, the streetscape the same as is what's been there before, except a much more aesthetic building than was there before. Uh, but we also don't want to disturb the, the brook or the flow of the brook. So that's why we're going to be building an elevated uh, parking deck uh, basically, and we're only going to put columns down uh, where we need for structure and not build that all the way into the ground. So we won't be disturbing any additional soils uh, alongside the brook or next to the brook. Uh, uh, it will be, you know, it'll be much more environmentally sensitive now. And one just follow up, if I may, too, uh, along with your earlier planning testimony. Obviously, the need for housing in the R3 zone is a given in the city of Patterson at this time. Well, absolutely. Uh, the R3 zone for this particular property does allow 
uh, 50 units an acre, and again, we're only proposing 49. So we are consistent with the, uh, the original master plan as well as the zoning ordinance uh, in terms of density and what the property should be utilized for. And again, <clears throat> the surrounding area does contain other multifamily units, so yes. we're, we're reasonably conforming with the surrounding area as well. Yeah, that was mentioned in Mr. Deutsch's report. Right. Uh, and, um, you know, there, there is existing multifamily structures uh, similar to this building. Um, well, it's actually a two-story garden apartment on the western side of Redwood Avenue across from our proposal. Okay. Now, Madam Chair, I will conclude our testimony. Of course, Mr. Bleeker is available for questions. Uh, yeah, I believe Mr. Aquaviva has a question. I do. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hi, Mr. Bleeker. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I have a question for you or Mr. Deutsch, if you can just maybe you can shed some light on it. I know that Molly Ann's Brook, you know, is technically a tributary of the Safe River. It is watershed, uh, watershed ravine, if you will. Do you know if you're subject to DEP regulations or DEP approvals for a building so close to the brook? Because I actually don't know the answer to that question. I didn't know if you looked into that or not. Yeah, we we would be subject to a DEP approval on that, Al. Um, there is no question. And that is really, you know, one of the main thrusts of why the building has to be located on the, uh, the side of the property that we are here proposing. Uh, right, that was my next question, why, why is being situated? I figured it has something to do with the DEP uh, standbacks and all that from the from the book. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want to represent an applicant and put something in the middle, knowing that we wouldn't be able to get the food by the state uh, later on. So this, this proposal is definitely plausible from the state perspective. Obviously, we'll have to file the application it's to get all the proper documentation, but I have confidence that this approval will be approved by them as well if the board approves it. Um, I believe, uh, Ms. Al, your, uh, your microphone's off. It's off. There you go. Um, so, Madam Chair, I just wanted to make it clear before the board that if the board were so inclined to grant an approval tonight, um, we have the it's okay. subject to the uh, DEP approval. Um, That's the ATP soil. That the ATP no, no, soil. No, ATP soil is something different. This is so a, this is a D. This is a D. This is DEP. Correct. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. I just, I just, uh, uh, Mr. Maraconda, you said you have. Do you have another witness, or is this? Did Mr. Bleeker give both? Board. Well, yeah, Mr. Bleeker's our only expert witness. We also have the applicant. Okay, but Mr. Bleeker just combined his architect and the planning. planning testimony, yes. Okay. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, have your other witness come up, and then I'll give it out to the public because there's only two witnesses, and they can call in if there should be a question for either one. Sure. Fine. I'm going to call Mr. Simone at this time. Okay. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give? Can you please put on your... Excuse me? Do you have your camera on? I do. Okay. Oh, I can't... I don't see it, but okay. Hold on. I don't see it. He's working on it. There it is. There we go. Okay. I see it. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your full name for the record. Come on. Thank you, uh, Mr. Simone. For the record, tell us your position with Chestnut Partners. Um, I'm one of the two partners. Um, okay. And as such, you're fully familiar with this site? Yes, I am. Okay. <clears throat> Obviously, you've heard Mr. Deutsch's report to the board, as well as uh, Mr. Bleeker's uh, professional testimony on your behalf? Yes. Uh, you're in full agreement with that testimony? Yes, I am. Okay. And you understand the particular uh, needs of this site as Mr. Bleeker's outlined them, and you understand the condition that was talked about regarding DEP approval as well? Yes, I do. Okay. And you are in agreement with the design of the building as well as the parking and the rooftop terrace as well as the other open space and other requirements? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else you wish to add uh, regarding the specific site? Other than that, I would ask you one or two other questions. Um, the uh, title of this property has been in your family for some years, is that correct? Uh, it's been a property that my mother's actually worked in 
Um, she has a salon on the first floor. This is very close to the fam the Bob it. Um, we bought it from that family. Okay, so how many years would that have been? Uh, 25 years. Okay, so now the proposal is the, bis the family business is winding down, or has winded down, I should say, and you're ready to move on to conform to the zone. Is that correct? Yes, we are. Okay, and uh, the uh, your your family's background has has have you done any other proposals uh, or new projects within this Patterson area or the Greater Patterson area? Uh, we've had several rental properties. Um, and we've done some building. We built a 16-unit building in Sake, um, and done some single-family homes as well. Okay, and so you have experience in Patterson with the rental market. Yes, we do. Okay. And uh, you're satisfied that this is a site that is in need of this type of new development? Yes, I think it would be a great addition to the area. Okay. Uh, I think that's all I have, Madam Chair, at this time. Okay, thank you. At this time, then, I'm going to open it up to the public. If there's anyone in the public who has any questions, I'm either Mr. Simone and Mr. Bleeker, Mr. Bleeker, the architect slash planner, Mr. Simone, the owner of the property, uh, please call in now at 973-321-1579. The meeting ID number is 711-680-0071. And I'm going to give two minutes for call-ins and three minutes for questions. Thank you. Madam Chair. Okay, thank you very much. So at this time, I'm going to open it up to the commissioners. Commissioners, do you have any questions of either of either Mr. Bleeker or Mr. Simone? I have a question. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to take Commissioner Brooks first, then Mr. Commissioner Udine will take you next. Okay, Commissioner Brooks, uh, why don't you start with uh, Mr. Bleeker? Mr. Bleeker, my first question is. I guess the DEP approval is, is that whole area up there is in a flood zone, isn't it? This, prop, this property is not? Or is that the reason that you need the DEP in addition to it just being next and uh, near to uh, Maui, Maui and Pro? Because from my understanding, most of that area up there is in a flood area. Yeah, I mean, we, um, some of the area off of Maui and Pro definitely is in the flood zone. Right. Uh, this building being, you know, again, the building that we're proposing is located in the same location as the existing building was. So we are, we are permitted to develop on that part of the site. Uh, but in extra I'm sorry, hold on. You were break, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. You were breaking up, uh, Mr. Bleeker. So uh, let me just, um, Commissioner Brooks, he said, the uh there is an existing building there now and this pro this is exactly in the same area where the existing building is that's what you missed when he was breaking up so okay. Okay. yeah mr bleaker go ahead thank you madam chair so the um our development is, is concentrated in the same location that the existing development is um on the right side of the property so we're outside the flood area and uh again we are one of the requirements of the flood area is we have to raise the existing building first floor elevation to be the proper elevation which this proposal is um, and then you are permitted to construct uh, your facility but the primary reason why we need the uh, DEP approval is what they call a stream encroachment permit and that's right. because we're located adjacent to the stream right. Right. so that's our primary reason and that's also a reason why we, we decided to, basically we're building an up, a deck for the parking. It's gonna have an elevated deck. Uh, there's only gonna be pier footings which is gonna go down uh, in a few locations. So it's gonna have very minimal 
um, fill, if you will, in the, in the area, so you're not really changing the existing pit at all, uh, other than putting those small pier footings in. So if we handle it properly, and uh, if we handle it efficiently in terms of fill and net fill, uh, the DEP looks favorably upon applications like that. And you're satisfied that this could be constructed safely and occupied safely within the confines of the zone? That is correct. Okay. And again, as Mr. Akuviva indicated, it's going to, you know, it would be subject to that approval for DEP is subject to, would, would kick in if you give the, if the board gives approval for this project, uh, we, it wouldn't go into effect unless DEP approves it as well. Did that help, Commissioner? Commissioner Brooks? Hey, man, I, I, I have my mic on. Okay, I understand. So, but you do know that the building that's there now would probably is more or less sort of like not grandfathered, but he's, he's in existence for such a period of time as to after or before the DEP or, or, or the, uh, the floodplain and the flood maps were changed, right? Right. So they're not really the same, it's not really the same uh, footprint of the new building that you're doing now because they wouldn't allow a building like that now to exist because the flood map has changed in that area, correct? Yeah, John would agree, I think. Right. You know, that, well, that is true. I mean, again, Commissioner, we will, if this, if this project is approved, Subject to approval of the DEP. If we cannot obtain the DEP permit, then this project doesn't isn't approved. You know, so if we don't satisfy the the DEP requirements that they they're going to put on this site, and two and two the requirements are, you know, the fill that would actually be added to the property or or taken away, as well as the location of the building itself in the height of the first floor. If for some reason none of that you know gets approved, then obviously this project doesn't move forward. And and I think as a follow up, uh, Commissioner Brooks, as you said correctly, we're now operating under much more stringent local, county, and state requirements for construction, and that's really why this building will have to be state of the art design. It's already moving in that direction based on the site plan. So this is going to be much much more. Uh, you know, I don't know who's got, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't know, somebody's got their mic on or somebody's got some background noise or something's on because I'm having a hard time hearing the conversation. So if anybody has anything on in the background, can I ask you please to turn it down? Thank you. Okay, that answered my question about that. I don't want to beat it to death. But did you also say that there was buses on Redwood Avenue? There's no bus, there's no uh Bus transportation on Redwood Avenue. The only ones is is at either Union Avenue or West Broadway. Yeah, I, I would think that's correct. correct. Yeah, we mean that's the Redwood towards the main road. Yeah. No, I thought you said that it was the buses on Redwood Avenue, but that's not true. Well, that yeah, that was a that was a misstatement on my part. Okay. All right, that's my question. That's my thank you. I meant okay. to say that Redwood leads to some of the major thoroughfares in the total section, and on those thoroughfares there is bus transportation. I thought you said on Totowa Road, it could have been the same. Yes, yeah, on Block okay. Totowa Avenue and, and the main thoroughfares in the Totowa section, yes. Okay, so, um, okay, so uh, Commissioner Odeen, I believe you had a question? Well, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, yes. yes, I do. Um, good evening, gentlemen. So, quick question. Yeah, there you mentioned, and I, I know about this area very well. There are uh, two families, three families, uh, and also across from the you know proposed uh, project, there is a garden style building. My question is: Is there any building around this building up for four stories? Commissioner, not at this time. However, your zoning allows a building of seven stories to be constructed in this zone. Um, so, you know, we are we are following the requirements of the zone, of the R3 zone in terms of the, uh, basically the building volume. So we are proposing obviously seven stories tonight, we are proposing four. Uh, but this would be the first four story structure in this location. But again, it is permitted to be constructed this site in this zone. 
Uh, Mr. Blinker, I have, I have another follow-up question. Um, Madam Chair, can I continue? I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry, I was muted, Jess. Please go ahead. All right, thank you. So the question is, uh, you are going to have 16 unit building around this zoning area. Do you have any other example that there are, uh, you know, around this close this to this number of unit building? Have uh, you designed or constructed buildings of this size? Is that what you're asking? Uh, right, right, sir. In this area, yeah, of course. Yeah, we did. Um, well, we originally did a structure uh, on. Um, I guess it was on uh, Westport Way uh, for St. Gerard, uh, Gerard's Church, which is the three and a half stories. Uh, it was a, a housing project many years ago. Uh, um, so, so the question is, um, so we are going to have 16 units in this building. My question is, do we have any other example which is close, uh, a unique number closer to this project? I mean, maybe 16, uh, you know, more than that, or maybe closer to this number? In this specific location? No. Uh, around this area? Not, not in this immediate vicinity, no. Throughout the city, obviously, we have done thousands of units. But what I want to stress, uh, Commissioner, is, again, if somebody could assemble this upsized property of this size, they would be permitted to build exactly the same size structure, if not bigger, than ours, and that because that's what your zoning allows. So every one of those two family houses next to us, if quite frankly someone got together and bought two or three of those two families, they could they, they could would be able to legally be able to take them down and rebuild a structure very similar to ours, uh, with the same configuration, up to seven stories even, even bigger than ours, than what we're proposing tonight. Your zoning permits it, your zoning allows it, so therefore uh, we can only go by that as our requirement when we do the good design is to stay within those confines of that ordinance, which we have. To. And I think another important point to take into account or to take into consideration, I should say, is that this lot size, as Mr. Blinkers alluded to, is extremely large for the typical uh, parcel size in the R3 zone that developers are looking to develop. We're just, with, just below the 15,000 square foot requirement for the 16 units and so this is kind of a unique site as Mr. Bleeker points out and it's it's really one that really basically stands out as a, a very suitable site in our opinion from a planning perspective for the multi-family development. We're not trying to uh, shoehorn if I can look that use that type of term uh, multi-family development into a small parcel. We understand that this is not a redevelopment zone but it's a high medium density zone and we have the good fortune that Simone family does of having a very, very large parcel, which we believe is ideally suited for this development. This is not an attempt to build this number of units on a small parcel, if you will. I, I, I do agree. And what uh, uh, Mr. Blicker mentioned that was you know, about future projects and it, it took, one might buy two uh, lots together and come up with something. That's, that's actually the future, but we in the board have to uh, think about the quality of life at the same time. It's not about just zoning permitting and we're going to have it. Uh, it doesn't work like this. This is a, this is why the board for, you know, whether it should be uh, okay for the community or not. But I do appreciate all the answers. Um, and I, I think this is it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioners, any other commissioner have any questions of Mr. Bleeker or Mr. Simone? Commissioners? Okay, hearing none. Mr. Maraconda? Yes, so we, we do not have to return to the public Madam Chair at this time. We've covered that. Oh, no, we do. I, I'm sorry. I, I got lost in the moment. Okay. Um, no, I think we did. Okay, that was for questions. I want to make sure that that was complete. Okay. Yeah, no, we did. And no, no, we didn't have anybody from the public, from the, okay. from the immediate area calling in. So okay. we didn't have any people who are, you know, have okay. questions on this. No, I believe I did that. I thought I lost my mind for a moment. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that there was 
There was not a need to return to the public a second time. I apologize. No, because yes. because I yeah I asked if everyone like that's why we had two we had two people okay. Mr. Bleeker, Mr. Simone and I asked okay. anybody in the public any questions. So as to the best of my knowledge, no one's called in. That's what Madam Secretary said. Thank you. Right, so I'm going to ask you to to uh, to please sum up. Thank you very much. Again, we, uh, we ask the board to take into account or consider this evening most respectfully. Uh, this particular site, it's a family site. It's been a family-owned site as a mixed-use building for many, many years. The Simone family is active in the city of Patterson and the surrounding area. This is an opportunity to, within the limitations and requirements of the uh, city ordinance and the, this particular zone, to provide needed new quality housing in one of the older neighborhoods in the city, very frankly. Um, it's an area which I think the site, particularly in the area, could very much use a, a shot in the arm of new quality housing. Uh, this is a site which will contain uh, house, uh, parking units, for parking spots for each unit. Uh, many in the units do contain one bedroom units as well. Uh, so we've got a design here where we have a challenging site, but a site that's particularly well suited to multifamily housing because of its size and dimension. Um, the developer and the uh, and the planner architect here have experience in designing something that fits within the zone that will comply with all state and county requirements for DEP, soil conservation. Uh, this is a site which will not be developed uh, where not for the willingness and uh, uh, challenge that this developer is willing to take on, if you will. Uh, it's a very positive uh, initiative on their part, we believe. We have very limited variances here. Again, uh, Mr. Bleeker's covered all those variances, so I won't belabor the point. But we do have substantial open space as well, both on site and above with the uh, upper area of the building, uh, being that, that open space, rec passive recreational space, if you will. Uh, I think this is a site that meets all the requirements for an R3 high medium density development from a planning perspective and would ask the board's consideration for a motion for approval. Thank you very much. I right, thank you. Commissioners, would any commissioner like to make a motion on this application? Commissioners? Now, All right, I'm gonna... any comments, Madam Chair, if there's any comments from any commissioners about any other suggestions about conditions, we would, we would, we would consider those as well. Now, I, I'm going to make a motion because not one person from that community called in um, to and had an issue with this. Um, I understand there are some issues, like we have some variances, yes, I understand that. And, uh, you know, I know this can't be approved without, you know, the, the other things like uh, DEP approval and city engineer and soil conservation and all that. So there are, you know, there are those issues, but I know that we can't move forward with the project unless you get those approvals anyway. So I'm going to make a motion on the application of uh, Chestnut Partners LLC 206-208 Redwood Avenue, um, property at 206-208 Redwood Avenue, block 1006, lot 55. Um, I move that the board attorney prepare a resolution uh, granting um, site plan approval, bulk variances, city engineer, DEP approval, HEP soil conservation uh, service. And I believe that was the only other... Mr. Aquaviva, am I correct? Was that the only other uh, thing that we had to add in there? Yes, that's all I heard. Mr. Aquaviva, right. I just wanted to point out that the applicant did suggest voluntarily that we would consider a partial basement area, considering the topography, to add additional area for utilities and laundry if possible. We did mention that as well. Okay, okay so we'll move well, that. Yeah, yeah, that would be a condition. Are you amending the application on the record to reflect that? Yeah, if, if it's if it's feasible from an engineering perspective. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so why that is Claire, just just clarify that for me, what that condition actually would be. And what that's going to run through again. Can you go to the site four times? What was that? Just just we're we're gonna flip to the floor plan, uh, Mr. Aquaviva. All right, the first floor plan. What what I would what my proposal would be is to if you see where the stairs are located, 
uh, what we can do is we can do a stair that actually underneath those stairs that would go down to a basement area and basically I would construct the basement the furthest away from the brook which would basically be the right hand side top apartment unit we would put a small basement underneath that one unit that one two bedroom unit that we're alluding to right now uh, with the gray area but we would construct a basement area underneath that corner uh, and which would have an access from the main lobby area and we would have uh, only mechanicals and uh, a laundry facility down in that location okay would there be any access to that from the outside or only from no, the stairs only from inside and only from the lobby there will be access okay, mr dorch are you okay with that there you are. You're muted, Mike. Okay. Yes, uh, at, at what stage will we know whether that's feasible or not? Uh, I, should, I mean, a deep, once we, you know, get a little further along the application, um, yeah. and, um, you know, it's, it's a net fill requirement uh, as long as we can, you know, get them to agree to that, that we would have no problem constructing that, number mm -hmm. one. And obviously a soil boring uh, test that would be done if this is approved, uh, which would determine where the water table is currently. And as long as we can, um, you know, overcome both of those issues, uh, we will gladly construct that basement. But if, you, but if you can't, then it reverts back to what's on the plan right now. Yes, but we would consider putting laundries within the units themselves then. That's what we would do. Okay, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out logistically you know, how we accomplish this. But basically, this is a record, but you're not entirely sure that you can even do this. So the question becomes, you know, what would be the process? Would you be informing Mr. George that you can or you can't? And then what? I mean, I'm, I'm just not sure right. how to actually reflect this. Well, on the we have legal smart revised plan reflecting that if it is permitted, but again, also offer the alternative of the small laundry within the unit if that can not be accomplished. Okay, so basically is what I'm saying. If this can't be done, then we're reverting back to what the testimony on the record was tonight based on the original plans. But with the addition of the small facility within each unit. Okay. If the, yeah, yeah. yeah, at least there'll be something there, the washers and dryers or whatever, for the people in the uh, building. Whether you put it, whether you can put it in the basement, provided the GDP allows, or if you can't, then you're going to put it in each. Um, you're going to be it back and put it into uh, each apartment, and you will supply those plans to Mr. Deutsch. That is true. Okay. And we think that's a very positive addition to the application. I do too, Mr. Mr. Aquaviva, are You okay then with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, Ms. George is okay with that. Okay, so that being said, and while that's on the record, okay, I'm going to ask, does anyone want to make a second on this application? I have no second. I'll go first. I'm sorry, who is that? Commissioner Dean. You're going to do the second? Okay, so, okay, I have a second, Commissioner Dean, so roll call, please. Commissioners, Commissioner Ahmed? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? My vote is... I got to ask the question about the affordability of these apartments because uh, um, I would have liked to see a less amount, but since I didn't see that. But I really would like to know about the... Um, but it's too late stuff. So. I guess my vote is yes. Commissioner Savalos? Yes. Commissioner Cleves? Yes. Commissioner Santana? Yes. Commissioner Yudin? Um, it's a yes, but I hear just request if possible, just get some parking areas so that I'll <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. Commissioner, you're breaking up a little bit. Can you can you try try telling us again what you'd like? I, I just said it's possible to add some parking areas. I was thinking if we add at least two more, three more, four more, whatever possible. 
would be really helpful. But that is Avenue is a really, uh, you know, during traffic time, you should drive, it takes really time. And think about if we have parking crisis, it's going to be hard to find street parking for those residents. And on the other side of this project, there's a garden, um, you know, uh, garden-sized, uh, what's it called, um, building. And they don't have enough parking as well. I understand and I'm feeling a lot to have project in the city of Patterson. But at the same time, I have to think about the community that we are living in. And um, I'm just requesting if possible. But my vote is yes. Okay, so uh, Chairwoman North. I'm sorry, I was muted. I'm sorry, yes. Thank you. Seven, uh, seven voted in the affirmative. This application is granted. Thank you, congratulations. I'm sorry, we didn't. Okay. What is it? I'm sorry, Madam Chair, we didn't hear your vote. I apologize. Yes, my vote is yes. One affirmative, one recused. And congratulations. We thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other business this evening, Mr. Deutsch? No. No, our next meeting is Wednesday, November 4th. Okay, I look forward to seeing everyone then. Motion to close the meeting. I make the motion. Who's got a second? Second. Somebody. Uh, Kapani, Commissioner second. Ahmed. Commissioner Ahmed, second. And all in favor, I can see the hands. Yay. Okay. <laughs> We're closing this meeting. We have a good night, everyone. Be safe. See you on uh, next Wednesday. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.